okay let us begin so yesterday we finished shipping and transportation yesterday we talked about something called inbound shipment process so we discussed that okay good afternoon and then we also talked about how do we do outbound shipment so that is the second exercise which we did and we talked about and then third exercise is about atp so we did atp exercise and how does atp exercise works so that would be another exercise which we will be discussing and talking about. Now we go to the next topic. And the next topic is related to billing. And this is also our last topic. So we have a covered PDF on sales. That was our first PDF. We have discussed and spent time talking with pricing. That was our second PDF. <clears throat> and just yesterday we have discussed and talked about the pdf which is related to shipping and transportation which we finished yesterday and today we're going to talk about our next pdf and the last pdf on the billing process so that is what we will be discussing and talking today billing process so all these different uh, transactions in inquiry quotation sales order contract scheduling agreement delivery transfer order good issue we have done several times we're going to talk about the billing billing also we have done multiple times so we have done billing also but we will be talking the billing billing is the final stage in the process process after billing know the topic nothing is left okay so good afternoon isra so billing is the last topic next topic and final step so that is why this is our final pdf the last pdf so in the billing when we invoice the customer now billing could be done on the basis of other billing document you can do billing based upon delivery billing based upon delivery is most often and that is what we have done several times you can also do billing on the basis of sales order for example we did example of a credit member request and debit member request when we do credit member request and debit member request in that case we are doing billing on the related to sales order so you can do fundamentally delivery in two different ways based upon sales order and also based upon uh, delivery delivery is the most most widely used now billing is a process of fi integration so what happens is it is a final step from as far as the sd is concerned and after the billing is done then there is handover to the finance and then finance do the collection and interaction with the customer and receive the material and the invoices so that is what we have here billing as a final step and also billing act as a fi integration so there is a finance integration Now, when you go to the billing integration, there could be different kind of billing. There could be invoices, credit memo, debit memo, perform invoice, cancellation. So these are all different scenarios which are there as far as SAP is concerned. Okay. So I want to do some of these exercises related to SD. So I want to do, uh, we have done this before, but end-to-end -end sales cycle. Okay. 
in end to end cell cycle what we want to do so we want to create a, i want to create a material means we can use existing material also but it's just to have an end to end material we also going to create customer master we going to create a sales order we going to create delivery which you have done several time and then we in the last we going to do bill okay now this is the end to end cycle which we have done also before so we go to mm01 so this is mm01 this is a customer which is x301 sales order is a va01 and then a delivery is the transaction code vl01n and then in the delivery we have a process of picking and pgi and that process also we have done several time good issue okay so this is end to end sales cycle with delivery related billing okay so we're going to do delivery related billing and the last we're going to do billing so we're going to do vf01 and we can also do vf Zero four. So there are two different type of billing document. We have zero one and we have zero four, and then we can verify document. So in a way, this is the whole end-to-end -end sales cycle. Okay. Now I log into SAP. So let's say I'm creating a material master MM01. Well, we can use any existing material also; it's not needed. But I'm just creating so we can have the whole material. So we just I will go quickly because this is the repeated step which you've done many many times. Hit enter. Okay. And we go to transportation group, loading group. Hit enter. Is a regular material. So we create a material. So this is a regular material. We could have used any existing material also, but we just create a material so we can have a material. Um, okay, so we created a material. Now because we have a material, so we need to have a stock also. So let me uh, create a stock um, so that we can do with a Migo. That also because unless you have a stock, you cannot sell it. So we go to Migo, and that also we have done several times. So it's, these are just the repeated steps actually. So we take the plant 1000, install patient table 01. Then we go to material, we can type our material, we can put our quantity. So we say 1000 pieces. Then we hit check, right? It's a regular guru seat, which we've done multiple times. So we save it. So material document has been saved. So we got a stock. And after that, if you want to check the stock also, we can check a stock as well. So the, in a stock, we have 1,000 pieces. So we have a stock of 1,000 pieces. Okay. So we are doing delivery related billing. We have created material. Now we create a customer also. And then, well, we can use existing customer also. So it's not actually needed, but it's just so we can have a new customer. 
So we're creating a customer, otherwise we can use existing customer as well. Uh, we put company code 1000, sales on 1000, additional channel 10, division 00, zero. then we hit enter. Okay. We hit enter. And then we enter, this is our standard customer. So this is just a regular customer, nothing different. Unique about this customer. And then we create a route 287. Okay. We go to postal code, city, country. So this is the customer which you've done. In this customer, there is a, nothing different and there is nothing unique. Okay. So we, so we can go back. 1400, hit enter, payment term, and we go to sales related. Regular customer, which you had done. So in this customer also, there is nothing actually different. In this customer also, there is actually nothing unique. Okay. So we go to shipping, delivery priority, Shipping condition, delivering plant 1000, enter the billing date, you know, same way as we created customers before. And then we go to tax classification. Hit it. We go to documents, we go to partner functions, and we set. So customer has been created. Now we make a note of the customer. This is the customer. So this is the customer. So we created a new customer. Now for this customer material, we want to create a sales order. Okay. And this sales order is also same sales order numerous of them we have done before order type or 101000 okay regular standard order we enter the customer we just created 103126 so okay and then we enter the material and the material is 15942 15942 Quantity 10 pieces. So, for example, I'm shipping 10 pieces. I can enter also price. You know, so the price is we have entered the price. Whatever selling price, hundred dollars. Okay, and then we hit enter. We hit sale. So, standard order has been created which is 2604. So create a sales order. We make a notice, note of sales order, irregular sales order. After sales order, we created delivery. Okay. So enter the, and then we create a date. Then we are picking and we save it and then we did a post condition. 
right so far so good it's the same process same step we have done material we created customer we created a sales order we created we created stock we created delivery picking in post goods issue okay so these all steps are same Okay, we create delivery. Now we want to create a billing. So how do we create billing? So for the billing, we go to sales and distribution, we go to billing, we go to billing document, we have 01, and that is what we have been doing. So this is we have 01. We hit enter and we can hit save. Billing is done. So this is an example of creating billing individual. We have 01. And then I go back. Go, we go back. Now there is also, which is we call it here, billing due list. This is a VF04. Okay. So now that is what I want to also talk. So we created billing document. That's why I put a two document. So there are two possibilities. It's called individual billing. And the individual billing we can do with the transaction code we have 01. Then there is another one called collective billing. In the collective billing, you can do with the transaction code we have 04. So we looked at it, we have 01. We can also look at we have 04. So make a note of both. So make a note of both. So individual billing, one document at a time. That is called individual billing. Collective billing, which basically means you can do multiple document processing at a time. So we have both choices. Individual billing, and we also have the choice of collective billing. So we can work, we can perform, we can do both okay. okay make a note of it individual billing collective billing Make a note of both. Okay. We make a note of this. Now we go to collective billing. We have zero four. So where is we have zero four? This is we have zero four. Now, if you go to behavioral flow, we have all these selection parameters. Look at this, all these selection parameters. Give me billing from, from this day to this date, billing type, document, by sales area, by customer, delivery related, billing related. You have all these different parameters, billing document type, batch input, and all that, right? So we have all these different parameters. And if I hit execute, and uh, then possibly we can see, you see that all these different documents came up from 2018. So that basically means all these different documents are there in the system, which is supposed to be built for whatever reason, they have not yet been built. These are all different dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of documents. If I want to make a further selection parameter, let us say, 
we are we are in VF04. We put 1000, we put 10, and then we put uh, 00. So I want to just have uh, all organization, uh, all billing documents for this sales area. Okay. And then we hit execute. So that is what we can see. All these, now the document list has further shortened. So we can see the number of document has further sorted. So you see that these are all part of sales organization, thousand, thousand, thousand. Now, if I go back and let us say, I just want for the customer we created. So we just want our customer 103, 126. I just want to put 103, 126. I want just this sold to party. And then we hit execute. Okay. Now, when we hit execute here, what do we see? So we see that here, this sales organization, this billing document, this is the ship to party, this is a billing document. And if I want to do collective processing, you can do collective processing. You can do collective processing online. And then we hit save. And then we save it. So see the message in the bottom. Document 9000-4077 has been saved. Now we have created a billing document. After that, I want to go to VA03. This was a sales order. I want to see my document flow. This is the document flow. This is the sales order, date, completed. Delivery date completed. Picking date completed. Good issue date completed. Invoice generated. In this invoice, we also have an accounting document. You see this? There's a accounting document. Now, <clears throat> this basically means this is where the accounting document is being created. This is where the accounting document in SAP has been created. Now, what is the meaning of it? So here we have all these different accounting document which has been created. Okay. Now, if I go to the accounting document, now this is in finance now. So you doc flow and in the document flow, we review accounting document, finance document, not billing document, accounting. This is in finance module. Okay. Now here, this is the document. Now here, this is the document number. This document number is different. So this is the accounting document. And this is the accounting document number. Now this document number is different. This is the billing document. Billing document is different. And this is the customer invoicing document. And this is the document which get created, which get updated in the finance. They're two different documents, two different purposes. Now here in this document, this is my customer. My customer has been debited. And my sales revenue, 8000 has been credited. This is important. This is the integration of finance and SD. So what happened? So there is accounting document. So this is my customer, 103-126, debit. Debit basically means we need to collect from the supplier, from the customer. Revenue, 
account 800 has been credited so here we have a accounting entry debit customer account and then credit sales revenue account sales revenue account so there is a debit entry and there is a credit entry now this is the customer because customer is debited because at the end of the day customer will pay us so it's a debit in my revenue that is why this is important because this time it hit my revenue account because every company assessment and understanding of calculation of revenue is important right? so for every company there has to be revenue so in that revenue this is very important posting so this is very very important posted okay. so this is very very important posted so end-to-end -end sales cycle with the delivery related billing we can do that this is metal master customer sales order delivery billing now the question is how this get determined so now we want to see there is account called 80000 you see that here 80000 now, how come this 800 came? Now, let's understand this. We go back. So, we are talking about revenue account determination. So, how revenue account determination? There was a revenue account called 8000. How come that account got determined? On what basis? So there is a configuration for that. So for that, we go to billing document. We go to status flow. And then if you go to billing document here, and uh, if you go to environment, and then you see here account determination, and then you will see revenue account determination. So where it is, more environment, account determination, and revenue account. If you go to revenue account, then what we see here? Then in the revenue account, this is what we see. In the revenue account, this is what we see. And that is, there is account determination procedure, COFI. You see this, COFI. This is another example of condition technique. This is another example of condition technique. And then we have a PR00. PR00 is our condition type for the price. And there are key combination. Key combination one, not carried out. Key combination number two, not carried out. Key combination number three, not carried out. Key combination number four, not carried out. Key num X, uh, number five, that is carried out. So at the key combination five, it is being found. Now where it is? So for that, we need to go to configuration. So we create new session. And this is another example of a condition technique actually. So like we do condition technique, we talk in pricing. This is another example of condition technique which works in SAP. So we go to sales and distribution. This sales and distribution. Then 
here in sales and distribution we go to basic functions and here we have something called account assignment and costing and here we have a revenue account determination and then we have here something let's look at some other functions so first and foremost we have something called define and assign account determination procedures so if we see here there is a procedure kofi 00 now what is behind this kofi 00 so we go to define and assign account determination procedure we click on it and then here we see that there is a define account determination and there's account determination so if you go to assign account determination and the billing document type is f2 f2 is a standard billing document type and this billing document type is assigned to the procedure kofi 00 okay so it's assigned to the procedure kofi 00 so it has been assigned to this account determination procedure that is the first thing that is why here we see this procedure kofi 00 so this is kofi 00 because this billing document type is assigned to this procedure we we'll go back now what is behind this procedure so we click on it and this is we have a kofi 00 then we go to control data and then here we have account determination kofi so this kofi uh, procedure is assigned to condition type kofi like similar condition technique now if we see this condition type is linked to access sequence so if you see here and if you were to define access sequence type so there is a access sequence there is access sequence also called kofi so there is access sequence called kofi and if you go to access sequence kofi if we click on it then we have a table one two three four five this is the last one 50. that is what we see here 50 general that is what we see here 50 table number four general we will go into the table also in this table if you go to the fields we have these fields condition type and uh, organization structure so by these parameters these parameters are set up in this table now this is the access sequence and then there is a defined account determination types so condition type is linked to access sequence so procedure procedure linked to condition type condition type linked to access sequence access sequence linked to condition tables so so far so good that is the standard account uh, uh, condition technique as we as we saw at the time of pricing also now after that then we go where is this key combination there is a key combination which is five zero so here we have assigned gl account see that here so there is a <clears throat> assigned gl account when you go to assign gl account if you click on it there these are some different tables somebody might have created if you go to account key zero zero five because that is the table which has been found so what system says here to me that in 005 condition table there is a chart of account int sales organization 1000 so here i have to go to chart of account int so where is int so we can put it application v condition type kofi chart of account int sales organization 1000 so see here so there are so many entries 14000 entries yeah so this is here so if you scroll down scroll up int is a standard chart of account
So many. 14,000 entries are there in this table. If I scroll up, okay. One, okay. Now see here, this, this entry. So if my condition type is V means sales, sales and distribution, condition type is Kofi, because that is linked to that procedure. Chart of account is INT, this is linked to our, condition, uh, our uh, company code. So chart of account is determined from company code. Sales organization 1000. So in our sales organization in the billing document is 1000. There is an account key ERL. This account key ERL is assigned to condition type in the pricing procedure, last column. And that is linked to GL account 8000. That is why we have this account determined as 80000 because of this entry. Now, where is this ERL? Now, this ERL is linked to the pricing procedure. So if you go to pricing procedure, we saw that pricing procedure, one of the column, the last column in the pricing procedure is this account key ERL. So if you go to maintain pricing procedure, and if I select Standard pricing procedure, RVAA01. If I go to control data, and then if you see here, the last account key is ERL. Okay. So ERL is the account key, which is associated to PR00. That is what we see here. And that is why in our analysis, we got account determined. So this is basically the process of revenue account determination, which works on the condition technique. We saw there's a procedure. So what was it? So we had a co procedure that is called uh, COFI00 that was linked to condition type and that condition type was Kofi and that was linked to excess sequence Kofi and that is linked to different tables. And that is where and the table has general ledger. So that is how the account, revenue account determination actually works. So this is the process of revenue account determination. Okay. Now, and we can close this now. So we saw the revenue account determination. Now, if I want to go back and check, I come out of it, I exit out. Now I want to verify the customer balances. So I want to go to customer balances because this customer owes $1,000 customer balances. For the verifying customer balances, you have to go to finance. There's a transaction code FD10N. Now that is in finance. So if I go to finance, accounting and financial accounting and account receivable, and uh, account, this is FD10 and this is the customer balances of the customer. This is the customer number 103-126. And in that, we have a company code 1000, fiscal year 2021, and there is hit execute. And there is a balance of 1000. If you double click on it, then you will see that on this date, due on this date based upon the payment term, 
This is the customer. This is the company code 1000. This is the name of customers. This is city and thousand dollars. This is there. If you double click on it, we will see that here that we have a customer. This is the company code. This is the GLR. Now, this is a reconciliation account. Remember, in the customer master, we used to enter the reconciliation account. So when we update to the customer master, it all behind the customer master, we have this GL. So 1400 is the reconciliation account, which is there. This is the accounting document. This is the amount, $1,000. Then we have a payment term. This is the uh, date on which it's gonna start. And this is the payment reference. So payment reference is my customer invoicing number. Assignment 800, this is my billing doc, uh, delivery document. So mm -hmm. delivery document number 800-2299. And the customer reference is the customer invoicing number. So this is accounting document. This is a customer invoicing document. Mm -hmm. Now we are in the finance. So we went to the finance and we have seen invoicing. So what we have what we have seen so far, this is end to end delivery related billing in which we get a material, create a customer, get a sales order, create a delivery, picking, post good issue, billing. In the billing, we saw billing in two different ways. We try to do individual billing, we have zero one. And we also try to do something called collective billing, which is VF04. Then we did doc flow, VF03. In the doc flow, we verify the revenue document, uh, review, uh, review of our accounting document. Now, accounting document and billing document is different. So this is the billing document, or I should say customer billing document. So this is the billing document, which goes to customer. Now, this is a internal document which update my finance now we went to this finance then we saw there is a customer account is debited and revenue account is credited now how the revenue account determination happened we went to the revenue account determination and this is the revenue account determination which is kofi 00 and we went in the entry okay so that is how system we can do and uh, we verify the customer balance now I want to do another exercise of credit memo exercise. So in the credit memo exercise, I want to create credit memo request, which is the transaction code VA01. Okay. And then I want to create credit memo which is the transaction code either vf01n or we can also do vf04 we can do either way and then we verify doc flow so verify document flow so let's let's do this exercise this is the second scenario which you're going to do So we want to go to the next step. Now I want to do credit member request. So for the credit member request, I go to VA01. And here I put a document type CR. Okay, so this is CR, 1010. And we hit enter. Oops. So we go to VA01. We go to CR. CR is a customer credit memo so we entered the document type cr hit enter so now when enter the cr it become the credit memo request okay now here we enter the customer we can use the same customer then hit enter we can enter the same material if you want we enter the quantity whatever one piece so we're creating a credit memo for one piece. So this is my material, 15942. This is my customer. Okay. We enter the PO number, whatever. And here we have a billing block. By default, there is always a billing block here. In the standard SAP, by default, there's a billing block. What, what is the meaning of this billing block? 
this billing block is like an approval, which basically means that before you get a credit to the customer, you may like to have some kind of approval. So that is why by default there is a billing block. And once somebody approves it, we can remove it. So we remove the billing block. Then we double click on the line item. Then we go to conditions. We enter the PR00. We enter the quantity, whatever hundred dollars. And we back. And then we save it. There is edit. OK, so system will ask us to enter additional field and say order region why you're giving credit. OK. So we go to complete data. And we say we are giving credit because. Of some. Uh, material was damaged in the. Transit. Document complete. Now we save it. So see the message in the bottom. That is a credit memo request. OK, so for that. We make a note of it. So there's a credit memo request. So there is a credit memo. Request. And after that, we want to create a credit memo. Now you have again two choices. We have 01 or we have 04. You can do individual billing, collective processing. Either way you can do. So after that, we go to billing. We go to if we go to VF01, then we enter this document. Then we hit enter. And then we can hit save. Done. Right. Or again, I can go to VF04. If you go to VF04, here I want to I can select delivery related, order related. I can put my customer and I can hit execute. Document is not shown to the delivery date. Okay. So now because the date was beyond that, so we change the date. Now we see that 100, 103, 126. This is my document number. Billing document of G2. G2 is a billing document for the credit memo. And this is my credit memo request number 6000. We select that. And again, I want to go to collective billing. Either we can do background. I want to do online so we can see what is going on. We again reach here $100. Take my customer, my material. And we save it. Okay. So see the message in the bottom. Document 9004077 has been saved. Okay. After that, we go back. We go back. I want to see the doc flow. I want to go to the doc flow V03. I put my customer credit request number. I want to see my billing document. And then I go to display document flow. So here what we see. So this is my credit member request completed. This is my credit memo, FI document generated, and this is my accounting document generated. Now again, I want to go and check accounting document. So there are two documents here. So this is a credit memo. There is a credit memo document. And this is my credit memo document. This is the customer credit memo document. Then in the doc flow, we also have an accounting document. This is the accounting document. We have a separate document, which is actually accounting document. Okay. This is the accounting document. Two zero 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 one two three. This is the accounting document which we have. So in the accounting document. We can have a customer now see the customer is credited now. Minus you see this credit entry. And the revenue is debited. So revenue is reduced same account, but is reduced debited. So entries here are reverse. <clears throat> so we review the document. And then we see here. So credit. Customer account. Now customer account is credited. And debit my sales revenue account. Okay. So now 
if you compare it with this, it has reversed. The credit and the debit has reversed. And now I want to see customer balance. If you want to see customer balance, FD10N, I can see customer balance. So for that, I again go back to slice and FD10N. And this is my, now, Amount is reduced. Nine hundred dollars. Earlier we had thousand dollars because we give a credit to the customer because some quality issues and for hundred dollars. So thousand minus hundred. This is reduced to nine hundred. If I double click on it, so we have a debit entry for thousand dollars on this date, and there is a credit entry for hundred dollars on this date. If you click on it, we will see the document also. This is the customer, this account document, amount, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see that whole information in the system. And this was my billing document. So you can cross refer that you got this from what document. Okay. So we can verify that information also in SAP system. Credit is minus, yes, that is a nomenclature. So anything credit is minus. <coughs> so we did a credit member request exercise. So we did two exercises. Now I wanna do one more exercise. Okay. I wanna do third exercise. Now the third exercise I wanna do related to debit memo okay okay so current member request now i want to do one more exercise and then i want to do debit memo so we did invoice and we want to do another exercise related to debit memo request so how can we do debit memo request we want to do that exercise as well related to debit memo. So debit memo request, that is the next exercise, which we're gonna do, third exercise, okay. Now, before we do this exercise, we will take a 10 minute break and we'll do continue the exercise after 10 minutes. So 10 minute break now, thank you. Okay, I'm back now, thank you. So let's briefly recap what we did. We create end-to-end -end sales cycle. Uh, delivery related. We created uh, and in that uh, we also checked how the revenue recognition process works. We created a credit memo exercise. This is an example of order related. Okay. So we did order related then uh, we want to do debit memo that is also order related then we want to do debit memo in sap related now this is a uh, um, when we create uh, this transaction, this is a 
doc type CR. And the debit memo is doc type equals to DR. Okay. These are the different document types. So make a note of these transactions. Credit memo, debit memo. Now, if I want to do a debit memo, how do we do? So we go to VA01. Rather than CR, we enter the document of DR, which is for debit memo, hit enter. We enter the sold to party. Hit enter. Hit enter. And we hit check. And then we double click. We enter the PR00. We enter the price. So we are creating a debit memo for 150. Okay. There's a billing block, okay. So in the credit memo also there's a billing block and there is a billing block at this time also. We can also remove that as well. We take that off. And here we can put an order region that why we are giving a debit memo. He said we are giving debit memo because there was a quantity discrepancy. You know, we oversupply, undersupply, we didn't invoice before. So there was some problem related to quantity. And because There was a problem in the quantity, so we need to And then we save it. So see the message in the bottom. Debit member request 7000205 has been saved. After that, we want to go to billing document. We can go to VF01, VF04 in same way. Hit enter. And there's a debit member for 150. And then we save it. David memo document set. Now for this document, I want to go to, I want to see the document flow and then see what happens. So we want to see the document flow and uh, environment, display document flow. So there is a debit memo. This is the date completed. Debit memo, this is the date completed. Accounting document clear. So there is a accounting document exercise. Okay. So here I want to go to this accounting document because there is accounting document got created. So this is the billing document, this accounting document. I want to go back and check the accounting document. And then because it's a debit memo, therefore, customer has been debited by $150. So this is exactly the entries which we see here. So debit memo and uh, this is reverse. So this is debit now, customer has been debited and sales revenue has been credited. It's like a original invoice. So this entry here and then this entry here both are same. Okay, so 
entry of the debit memo is exactly same as the entries from the original invoice so both these entries are exactly the same okay now i want to go and check the customer balance so then again i go back to every 10 and check the balances then we go to hit enter and now we have a 1050 now what is the 1050 now this 1050 become because we have a thousand dollar which is original invoice then there was a credit memo of hundred dollars so thousand and uh, minus hundred nine hundred then there is a debit of 150 so thousand minus hundred plus 150 the net become 1050 if i go to this 150 amount this is we are in fi now now here this is the customer this is the company code this is the gl account this is my accounting document number and this was the debit memo number so against this document system has created this document okay so that is what system does for us okay okay so this is another exercise we have done now i want to do one more uh, exercise so let us say i create a sales order regular sales order so we have done three scenarios and we go to order or i select my customer i select my material select the quantity so 10 pieces or whatever Then I double click, I enter the price. This is a regular sales order as we have done many of them. So for $1,000, I'm creating a sales order. And then we save it. Sales order saved. After that, I want to create a delivery. So there is a delivery document and I want to create a delivery. Again, this is the same delivery as we have done numerous times delivery and then we did a post collection so we created a sales order and then we created a delivery Okay, so we create a billing document. Okay. So what we have done so far. So now last step we go to billing document. So so far what we have done. So far we have done these steps. Let me copy these steps. so far we have done these steps right now after that there is a billing document type here you see this billing document type so there is a billing document type and uh, here in the document we have all these different document type you see that here they are all different document type by by default on the sales document type we never selected any of these document type. There is a F2. F2 is a standard billing document type. 
Now, why we have not selected any document type? And from where the document type get come because we never selected. So there is a configuration in the order type and system automatically take billing document type from there. So if you go to SPRO, if you go to SAP reference IMG, and if I go to sales and distribution, and if you go to sales and distribution here, and if you go to basic functions, that's not, not basic functions, sales, and here, and if you go to sales and distribution, and if you go to OR, standard order. Now here in the configuration of OR, we have a few things which is defined. The one thing which is defined here is that what is F2. So F2 is defined. F2 is the uh, delivery related billing term. And then there is a LF which is defined. System automatically select billing document type from here. So, so the here, so when we did a billing document type, so here billing doc type was F2. Okay. And that F2 system automatically picks up from this configuration. Now, when we see Credit memo and debit memo. So if you go to credit memo, so there's a credit memo request here. If you double click on it, and then if you go to in the very much in the bottom, then it's because we're doing order related billings. So there's a document type G2. So there is a document type here. So when we created this, then we have doc type G2. Then when we go to delivery document type, so there's a CR, and then we go to DR, if we double click on it, then here we have document type L2. So these are the different document type which is being automatically determined from the system based upon the configuration which is assigned to L2 okay so that is why when we come here that's why we come here we never selected any document type billing document type it automatically picks up from there but if you want to choose you can choose it you know perform is or whatever so and we save it so we created billing document type 900807. Okay. Now after that, I want to go to VA03 and see the document flow environment document flow. Now here we create a performing document. You see the perform. So what we did post good issue. Then we did a billing. Okay. And the billing document for Performa. Now, what is the difference between the Performa and the regular one? Okay, what is the difference? The difference is in case of Performa, in case of Performa document, no accounting document get created. System does not create any accounting document at all okay so any accounting document does not get created so here no accounting document got created this is a so interest sales cycle with pro forma invoice scenario. Okay. This was example of pro forma. That's why it's called pro forma. No accounting document. It doesn't have any impact, no impact on finance.
because there's no impact on finance. That is, is a is a pro forma invoice, is a provisional invoice. Go to VF01, hit enter, and we hit save. After that, we go to top floor again, and we save it, document flow, display document flow. Now, the actual invoice is created. Now, when we create actual invoice, then accounting document is created. So here, billing document, performance invoice is created. Then we created, So here, created customer invoice document. And then accounting document got created. And this has an impact on finance. because it's accounting document. So perform invoice, no impact on the finance. When we do other invoice, then it has an impact on finance. Okay, that is what this basically means. So this is document type F2. This is document type F7. And this was doc type doc type f7 that is what we can do so these are some of the exercises we have done so what we did we did few combinations we did the uh, end to end sales order delivery related exercise we did a credit member exercise which is order related we did debit member exercise, which is order related. We did end to end exercise with the performer invoice. We also did performer invoice. So invoice, credit memo, debit memo, performer invoice. So all those different type of invoicing, we have done collective billing, we have done individual billing. We also verified integration with the finance. We also did account determination. And here, there is also something called cancel. You see the VF11, cancel. And this is the document. Hit enter. And we hit save. See the message in the bottom. We canceled the billing document. Because for various reasons, so make a note, once billing document is created, then it cannot be changed. Once you do a billing document, it's done. You can't change it. But we can cancel it. Now, after cancellation, we want to see the doc flow again. So we want to see doc flow. And we want to see end to end cycle what we have done so far. So we go to VA03, verify the doc flow. This is the doc flow. And this is what we done. We did a standard order, delivery, picking, PGI, then we did a performer. Then performer, we created an original invoice. Then there was accounting document. 
and uh, this was the document number 780 781 782 it is reversed now this is invoice cancellation if you select that and if you go to display document this is the reversal reversal document type is s1 reversal doc type reversal doc type equals to s1 the doc type is s1 if i go to accounting document there is accounting document and we double click on it now because we did a reversal see the account entries has been changed my customer has been credited we debit before is credited now it's changed this is what account entry happened at the at the time of so in account at the time of credit memo so here we verify we verify accounting document and in accounting document what do we see customer is credited sales revenue account is debited this is basically when we are looking at cancellation document okay. this is at the cancellation document so we should write down this here so what we did now look at it here back so we did perform invoice then we did an invoice then we cancelled the invoice and after cancellation i want to go back to vf01 again and uh, i want to put my delivery document number so what was the delivery document number This not delivery document. So exit. We go to VA02. We see the doc flow. And in the doc flow, this was my delivery document. Because we have done the cancellation of the invoice. Okay. So we have done the cancellation of invoice. Okay. We hit back. Right. Then we go to VF01. Hit enter. And we hit save. Okay, we done invoice again. We go back and verify what we have done so far. So we verify document flow. So this is what we done. <clears throat> Standard order completed, delivery, picking, PGI. Then we did perform invoice. After perform invoice, no accounting document. We did original invoice. After original invoice, we cancel that invoice. Something was wrong with it. And then we did invoice again. This is end to end cancellation scenario. Verify document. And then we did customer invoicing again. This is the transaction code with a VF01N. And then there is a accounting document.
And in this accounting document, we can again verify there is a, if you go to accounting document, again, there is a debit to the customer. Customer has been debited. So that is how system can do cancellation of invoices. So thank you. We are done. Thank you all. Take care.